Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. ESP8266 is only one year old and already everybody starling. It started with a simple ESP01 and was extended to a whole family of modules. In this video I will give an overview over the most recent modules available from China. I will concentrate on the newer boards which include an ESP12 E or F module, a simple breakout board, three different Node MCU boards, a prototyping board for Node MCU, the D1 Mini Node MCU, the Witty Cloud Development Board and the Wemos D1 Arduino like board. Because all use the same basic module, they share its properties. An ESP8266 chip with 4 MB flash. And no external antenna connector. Most boards include also a USB to serial chip and are programmed using an USB cable. One of the biggest differences are the number of pins available to the user. The ESP12E module itself exposes 20 pins. So you should think you cannot get more pins on the boards. But some modules have up to 30 pins. Another difference is the form factor. They range from small to medium sized to Arduino sized. For my tests I used the currently newest 2.1 version of the ESP programming environment. If you use an older one, maybe you do not find all board definitions. But let's start with the smallest board. It is only a PCB for an ESP12E board with pin headers and therefore has no USB programming chip nor a voltage regulator on board. Unfortunately, it is not breadboard friendly. For powering the board, you have two possibilities. Either you solder a connection on the bottom side of the board, as shown on the left. Or, if you want to use it with higher voltages, you have to solder a voltage regulator on the pins at the bottom. Unfortunately, I did not have a voltage regulator with a V-in pin in the middle. So I had to improvise with an AMS1117-3.3 volt. Use a low drop version if you want to power the board with 5 volts. Because this board is not breadboard friendly and big, I don't like it. Recently I found another board at Osh Park which avoids this flaw. I post a link in the description. One reason to use this particular breakout will be given later in this video. Now we go on to the more elaborated modules. The D1 Mini Node MCU board. It is quite small and has 16 pins. All Node MCU GPIO pins are available as well as the ADC pin. Programming is done with a CH340 chip and the normal Node MCU concept with two FETs and some resistors. If you program it with the Arduino IDE, you have to select the VMOS mini board. In addition, you get one ground, one 3.3 volt and one 5 volt pin. It has a small linear 3.3 volt regulator on board. The board itself is somehow breadboard friendly. At least it leaves you with one row of pins to connect your wires. Overall, I think this is a good board with all things you need. Pricing on AliExpress is similar to the bigger Node MCU boards. The next in our row is the Node MCU version 0.9. I think it was the first Node MCU board available. Pay attention, it uses the ESP12 chip which has only 1 MB flash and 6 pins are not connected to the outside. From a pins point of view, it does not have much more than the mini Note MCU, but it is much bigger and unfortunately not breadboard friendly. 
you do not get any free holes along the board. Today this board is definitely a no buy option. The next board is the Node MCU board from Doit. It also has 30 pins and all ESP 12E pins are available. Powering again is only via USB and a small linear 3.3 volt regulator. Fortunately this board has the same width as the Mini and can be used on a breadboard. Programming is done by selecting the Node MCU 1.0 board in the Arduino IDE. It costs about the same as the Mini Node MCU board. In my opinion, this board has its value if you need the extra pins provided by the ESP12E module. Otherwise, you can go with the Mini. The next kit in the block is the Node MCU board from Lo Lin. It is very similar to the last board from Doit, only bigger. The only difference from an electrical point of view is the bigger linear 3.3 volt regulator, which could help if you need excess current for many LEDs or for motors. Compared to the other boards, it has no big technical benefit. However, it is cheaper and has an advantage we will see later in this video. The next board is very different. It is a mixture of an ESP12E and an Arduino. The board and the mechanical pinout are Arduino-like. The CPU is an ESP8266. Unfortunately, this concept looks better than it is because it only resembles mechanically to an Arduino board. The ESP12 does not have as much GPIO nor does it have 8 analog pins. This is why some pins of this board are not connected and some are connected to the same ESP pin. Pin D13 for example is wired to pin D5. If you blink D13 you also blink D5. This board is also nearly double the price of the other Node MCU boards. For me this board is a bad compromise because normal shields will not work, either because they use different pins or because the library is not working. The GPIO pins are also 3.3 volt and not 5 volt. They are also not protected against 5 volt. Because the normal Arduino shields use the 5 volt pins as VCC, their outputs are also 5 volts and are directly connected to the input pins of the ESP. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. The next board is a typical prototype shield. Instead of soldering an ESP12E directly on this board, they decided to use the Lowlin board discussed earlier. And now you see also the additional value of this board mentioned earlier. It is the only board in addition to the old Node MCU version 0.9 board, which is wide enough to fit into the prototype port. This board has a 5 volt switching regulator, which is good if you supply high voltage, because it does not heat up on higher input voltages. If you supply no external power, the 5 volt pins on the board have no use. You can however use the USB pins. They also provide 5 volts. The important GPIO pins are all connected to 4 male headers, which is very handy. The pins on the other side of the board have one header pin. A lot of ground pins are available and also 4 times 3.3 volt and 4 times 5 volt are here. The price is around 4 dollars. Even if you have to add the cost of the Lowlin board, it is still a good board for me. I definitely recommend it for prototypes. The only warning, there are also 4 V-in pins available. These carry a quite a high voltage of 6 to 24 volts. Pay attention that you never connect one of these to any of the 3.3 or 5 volt pins. Last but not least, I have to look on a witty cloud development board. 
Some guys in regions with no rain might be very interested in such a small device. But I'm not really sure if it can develop rain clouds. Let's have a closer look at it. It consists of two boards which can be connected. The top board is very similar to the ESP12 breakout board we saw earlier in the video. It even is pin compatible. The only difference is that this board has a 3.3 volt regulator as standard because it is powered by USB. The bottom PCB is the programming unit with a CH340 chip. This concept is okay if you buy more than one top PCBs and use the bottom PCB as their programmer. Let's continue towards the promised cloud. The top PCB has a three color LED. Each color is connected to a GPO pin. And in addition, it has a light sensitive LDR, which is connected to the ADC pin. This might be fun for a beginner and then also only for the first few minutes. But bear in mind that if you want to use one of the GPO 12, 13 or 15 as input pins, your source have to deliver 4 mA because it has to light also the respective LED if it's high. The LDR has a variable resistance. If you want to use the ADC pin for another purpose, you have either to desolder the LDR or make sure it stays dark. In bright light, it has a resistance of a few 100 ohms and will probably influence your measurement. The initially delivered board has a firmware installed. You should be able to download a smartphone app and connect to the board and steer the LEDs. You even can key in your local Wi-Fi credentials and then the board is able to call home. I did not find out what is transferred during this call to China. I was stopped already during the creation of an account. For me, this board is a gadget. The only positive is the lower part. It can be used to program your breakout boards reviewed before. But since I do not like them, I forget also this one. These were all my ESP8266 treasures. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!